good afternoon again. So, um, <laughs> so, um, okay. Um, so I will apologize in advance because it may be a very long story, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I'll try to make it short. Yeah. So, um, I will start from, from the beginning because what we're supposed to do here, which is what they've done is to share uh, story, our experience, and then um, any lessons that we have for um, other people who want to go on this journey, too. So I'll start from the beginning, which is when I was um, when I was in university. I think my third year. So that was when I started getting worried. It was a five-year course, so. I started getting worried that after school, what was I going to do? Because my own laziness came very early in life. <laughs> because <laughs> so be, because I found that at that time I used to check Guardian for vacancies, even while I was still in school, I was preparing. But the only thing that I always looked out for was vacancies for managing directors. <laughs> and I would see the requirements. <laughs> I would see I would see the requirements and I could never meet it. So I felt that I would try it when I I would just apply. If they invite me, I will perform. <laughs> but at the point I knew that it was a pipe dream. So I, I became aware I wanted to do something. So one of those very long uh, strikes, ASU strike, I started to do business. I went into business with my friend. We started a video game business, but it was a disaster for so many reasons. I was too shy to even tend to the business. So I left it to him. So after about two months, everything was gone. So, I mean, I was sure that, after that, I was sure that I was not going to do that kind of business. And then the figures they were giving me, even while we were, I, it wasn't MD money. So, I was not really interested in it. So, <laughs> yeah, so that was when I found... Um, Okay, I, my dad tricked me to attend uh, Dr. Ojigbasi's information and internet marketing. Yes, he tricked me to attend uh, the, the boot camp, which Mr. Odusholu uh, taught us. It was, and Akin was, Otumba was in my class that year, Honorable Otumba. Otumba, Honorable, yeah. So, um, and that was the turning point. For me, that was the turn, that was the first time I understood I understood money and how to make it. So it was so, so I ran with it. I started, but of course, I still had big dreams. So I could not get. Um, I did business plans. I couldn't get anybody to finance it. So eventually, I um, I got a job, a printing job, to do something. So I made with my friend my partner the first time but this time 
we just shared our money. So I took my own four thousand naira. I bought a, a domain, registered a domain, bought hosting, exactly twenty dollars. With <laughs> no, uh, it, it was two thousand and two, okay. two thousand and two. So and I, so when I started, I realized that I needed traffic. I needed th there was a problem, so I tried everything. Nothing was working. So one day, I sent doctor an email. Again, in the middle of the night. I wanted to send it to him so that I'll just go and sleep. Uh, if he replies, let me know. So I sent him an email. I said, I attended your workshop, and this is what I've been able to do so far. I want to do adverts. Uh, and I'm thinking, how much? I didn't have money, though. And I was surprised. He replied me. And then the success digest that came out after then, I just saw my email to him. Is you know it was like a full page. I said, "What advert can be more than this?" So I mean, that that kick started. That was where people started, you know, coming and uh, somewhere along the line, I fine tuned to become more efficient. And uh, I, I, I'm going to cut it short. So I made some. I was making some money then. When people would ask me, but I was working really hard. When people would ask me, "Are you making money?" This thing you are doing, I say yes. I'm making money, say, but the kind of money I'm making is blood money. They will say, what do you mean? I say, I'm really working hard for this thing. <laughs> for every naira that comes, <laughs> part of my blood. <laughs> so, so, and I will tell them that this is not, this is not what, this is not how I want to. <laughs> no, it was, it was good there, but this is not how I want to continue making money. Something must change. So, but that led me very early to start doing something that he talked about after making money you want to keep the money and multiply it so because i knew that i could not continue that way i started keeping money very early after the very first one that i used to eat akara after the very first one, i started keeping money buying um stock then and all that and and then um from then I mean, from there, I uh, went on into network marketing. I accidentally found myself in, in network marketing. But because we had learned internet marketing, I could sell anything. So network marketing was a piece of cake. So I found myself there. I made, um, I made some good money, too. Then from there, I, found, I, I discovered electronic currencies, e-gold. That year, e-gold. So I went on into um, e-gold exchange. We called it exchange then. So and by this time, I was out of school already. I was, I, was, I was a graduate. The money was starting to look like general manager money. <laughs> but, yeah, but, but there was still a lot of, there was still a lot of blood. So that was the problem because I was a one-man company. You know, I, eventually I will. So, I mean, we, you know, I progressed. And then um, keeping money, multiplying. I also very early started to do, uh, to invest in real estate. So that helped me to keep money and then for it to, to appreciate. So, um, I mean, and that went on until I did some other, but I did not attend any other, any other, uh, any, any, any training, any workshop. So I was running all the while with the information, the knowledge I got from here in 2002. So all the while, all the while till 2000 and, um, uh, 2015, 2015, yes. I'll, I'll see what happened in 2015. But all that while, I I eventually got into Forex. I got into Forex, and it was looking better, less blood. I could employ people. The money too was good, so I could, you know. But it was still hard. I kept. Then I tried a few other things, uh, video production, 
music, um, label, uh, comed comedy, I mean, producer. I, uh, I held on to them for a while, for a while. Even though they were bleeding me, I was losing money and all of that. Until 2015, I'll just fast forward, 2015, when I attended Pan Atlantic University, EDC. So I was there for five months. And in those five months, I thought, okay, please let me. Before then, I'd attempted to get more knowledge, to update the knowledge. I went to um, Lasso. I did an MBA. So, but it was not the knowledge I was looking for. I, I stayed, I finished everything, and then I dropped out at the end. Because I saw that I was not going to have another opportunity to become, to be sure of becoming a billionaire. Billionaires are supposed to drop out. <laughs> so, well, because the last knowledge was, the MBA knowledge was useless. I took advantage of that to drop out. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> so, I went to EDC, Pan Atlantic, and it was the best decision because. Um, no, um, same, same, yes. Same. You did same? Okay. <coughs> Interesting. Oh, okay, you did same too. Interesting, same. Ah, I'm my senior, 35. So, and that was, that connected all the dots, all the struggles I was having with scaling up from a small business. Everything connected. Everything connected. So, um, from that point on, I mean, it's not long ago, from that point on, things took uh, a different turn, and I was able to finally, <laughs> the, blood mo the blood money stopped. So, and no, it, it, trans it, was, it was still blood money. No, no, yes, because at that point, I now, I learned to effectively and effic efficiently use other people's blood. <laughs> so it was, but no more my blood. And because there are plenty of us, there was enough blood <laughs> to go <laughs> <and> to. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but this is very, this is very, my story is very interesting because there's someone else that I'm going to implicate now. So 2015, 2016, I was out of EDC. By 2018, I was sure that I needed to move again. There was something. The knowledge from EDC, though massive, was not pushing me. It was what I needed. So... Uh, January last year, I've, I attended uh, Reverend that's Dr. Samade Yemi's Global CEO Conference, something, and I met Mr. Arolo. <laughs> so, you know, it was, and that was that that connected another part of the puzzle for me that we had to go global. There had to be a global strategy, and then that's you know I started to from last year, last year to work on that. And that is what got me to the point now where um, I mentioned that I'm director responsible for West Africa for Citizens International. So that is how I found myself there. And then, I mean, in that time, I've, I, I, I've been able to, to get a, a enough experience and knowledge in um, going global, business, lifestyle. I have a lot of experience now, and that is why I'm able to consult for I network individuals right now. So um, that's where we are. Now, for the, the lessons that me, I would pick out, that, that I would tell people to pay attention to, I'll be repeating some of the things he said. First, 
I mean, one must know how to make money. One must. Fortunately, most people are able to, one way or the other. The problem is most people stop at making money. So next is one must um, know how to keep money aside and then to multiply it. So that, that you know, that, uh, of course, then after multiplying it, keeping it, multiplying it, this is where my high net worth uh, clients coming. One must be able to preserve that wealth, preserve it, and um, keep it safe, keep oneself safe, safe, and um, for health. One must be able to, you have the money, so the lifestyle, you must be able to move around the world, go on vacations, and all that. So I think that for now, I have completed that. So um, the other lesson is knowledge. I mean, one is never going to be able to fly a plane with um, driving school knowledge. So while it is okay to start to learn how to run first, when, when you've mastered running or when you can run very well, you should um, recognize and know when you should go to a driving school to learn how to drive. When you can drive, you should know when you get to the point that you go to uh, flying school. So knowledge at every point in time. Uh, thank you very much. Um, okay, I'm going to start with, with saying that I, I learned about Success Digest in a bus. I was going back to school in 2003, and, and <laughs> uh, the guy sitting beside me had a copy of Success Digest magazine. And he wasn't reading it. He was basically sleeping. And I was really, really bored. I needed something to read. And I, and I put all my books inside my bag, which had been put inside the boat, so I couldn't reach them. So I tapped him and I said, please, can I read your magazine? And he said, yes. And I took it, and I saw uh, the title was Success Digest. And I kept wondering, what is this Success Digest thing? And that basically started it for me. And after reading it, I went, my school was in Omaha. And I went to all the newsstands in Omaha looking for more copies, and I couldn't find it. And I went to about looking for it, I couldn't find it. And I went to Oweri, and I found two more. And with each one that I read, I just kept on you know, wanting to find out more and more. I had to come back to Lagos and go to different newsstands to buy old copies of the magazine. I attended um, in 2008. I was here for the first information marketing business workshop. The money I paid for that, I, it was 5,000 naira. My sister lent me the money. I was basically more or less trekking so that I could have enough money to, to come from first stack to this place. So I'll trek part of the way and then pay for transport part of the way. And it basically changed my life. Now, fast forward to 2010, 2011, I think. I had made my, my about, my one of my info products had made about a million naira, so I was really, really happy and, and joyful. But then I found out that every other thing that I, I tried to do to improve on it wasn't working. I had basically hit a ceiling. You know, I'll come up with a new product idea and I'll think, okay, now this will make 10 mil. And it will probably do 100,000. I'll be like, what the hell, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, you know, yeah, so much blood, you know. And I kept, it kept happening and happening. And so one day I requested a meeting with, with um, daddy here. And I told him, you know, I, I seem not to be able to replicate this big result that I've, you know, that I've been able to do. And he said something, and he said, you know how to make money, but you don't know how to build a business. Mm. What you, sh you need to do next is learn how to build a business. And I kept thinking about it. I was like, okay, okay, I need to stop making money and build a business. But doesn't build a business mean making money? Like, I really wasn't sure. But then, and I started reading more about it. I read the e-myth, 
you know, and I started learning about systems and all of that. And when I now started implementing all of that, and, and at that beginning stage, it was still just me, right? But then I now started on purpose, started doing what businesses should do. I started keeping proper records. I knew exactly how much I earned. I knew exactly how much I was spending. I knew how many clients I had, how many people had bought my stuff. I, you know, I had, I started creating a, full up, a proper follow-up system. I paid for an autoresponder, even if I thought, I still thought at the time that it was a waste of money, you know? <laughs> so I really started doing a whole lot of the things that, you know, that proper businesses do. And then the results started improving. And then I came to him again some other time and he said, you know, if you really want to move ahead even faster, you should have an office. You can run a big business from home. So I was like, okay, now I need an office. I don't have enough money to, to <laughs> for an office. So I asked him, I said, can I, can I use maybe somewhere in Success there? Yes. I said, yeah. You know, you know, you can use one of our offices. So I started using that place as my, my office, you know, and, and then it kept going on from there. And along the line, I figured out that the kind of business I was talking to Aki actually, I'm sure he probably has forgotten. The, the, the kind of business you build will determine how fast your, your, success, your success is, you know, how, how fast you move on your path. Some people, their business ideas are not scalable, basically. Like, it doesn't matter how much blood, you know, they put into it, it's just going to remain a small business. So the business idea and the model you choose is super, super important. It has to be something that you can sell. Like he was talking about going global. It has to be something that you can basically sell to anybody in the world. Because now, today we sell practically to people abroad. We have clients from all sorts of countries, you know. So, and then number, the number three thing that's helped me is, is you know, very good support systems. In 2012 or 2013, was it 2013, 2014, when you, you had been asking me to move to Leggy for about three years, and I kept saying, oh man, nah, I'm not coming, that place is too far. You know, and each time we, we spoke, the first thing we would say was, you like that your first start too much. <laughs> you know? And I kept saying, yeah, I, I know, I know, I just, I just like it, it's fine. And then one day he called again and said oh, uh, that he was putting up a seminar and that I should come and speak. And when I got there, I was blown away because the last time I knew about his company in Arabic was he would come to SADC, you know, and he would basically update the back ends, you know, the results from the back ends and so on. And then I got there and, you know, they had, you know, combined these two buildings and I was like, has this thing grown this much? I should have come to Lekki like, like two, three years ago, <laughs> you know. So, but coming there, he, I told him, okay, now I'm ready to move. Right, you know, he gave me an office. You know, he he paid for my f for the, for the first year for my house. You know, and you know he he gave me some money. You know, uh, for my car. You know, and so so, yeah, second car person. Yes. Mm -hmm. So so a, a very good support system is very very vital. You know, um, people who can who can support you and encourage you, and he's done because a lot of times we talk about ideas, we talk about it's really really hard. business is lonely, entrepreneurship is very very lonely, and having people who can help you see further than you can see yourself is 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 I think one one of, one of the one of the very very key things you know to help move move you forward. That's it basically. Thanks. How many did you spend? Maybe five minutes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I want to say a big thank you to Daddy for this privilege. Um, so how will I start? Maybe I'll just talk about digital storytelling about myself. Uh, I got into business for survival reason. I were found in the university. 
and then my parents were they were doing everything for us so um when i got to 2011 i said to myself that if i'm not careful i'm going to be out of school and i wanted to finish i wanted to have business running for me and all of that and then i realized that my brother bought a pentium one system he didn't know how to use it and that was his only asset and he can't touch it so i needed to trade my <laughs> I had to choose my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we strike the deal with my mom. I will lose half of my food to so now to open the system, touch it, and then I will trade my lunch to so now to, I mean, bring it back to life and all of that. I didn't know I was going to use the knowledge when I got um, when I got admission into university. And then I looked around to see what I could do to support my parents. And I realized that the only knowledge I could pass for knowledge was to teach people how to use the system. I couldn't go to Aptec and Aids and all of that because we couldn't afford it. And I then I couldn't tell my parents that I wanted to start a business because they won't allow me. So somehow, some way, uh, checking the school environment, I realized that I could train people how to use the system. But the question is, what system are you going to use? Your brother isn't going to give you the Pentamon system. That was his only asset. So I looked for a friend who had a Pentium 2 system. He was a computer science student, and I told him that, let's partner. Any money I make from this business, I'll give you 50-50. Uh, there was nothing like an agreement or anything, but because of trust, he gave me the Pentium 2 system. And then the next question is, where are we going to sit to run this training? So we went to our church, because the pastor is always coding on the altar, and then say different things, you should not rely on your parents and all of that. And then we approached the pastor and he said, okay, you use the church and then I'll give you access to run this. So on a Sunday, the pastor came out and brought the two of us out and then did all the, you know, introduction, marketing. <laughs> and then the first 50 students that was in the class was from the church and then they all paid a thousand there. So... <laughs> So I had to start lecture because that was the first training and then got people together and then we shared the money 50-50. One of the things people need to understand is integrity. We didn't sign any agreement, but I told the guy that the first whatever we make every time we gather, we're going to share the money. And then I realized that we moved from one school fellowship to two to three and then people started recommending. And I, it got to a point that I was paying people's school fees, house rent, and I was like a big boy. But the only currency I could trade at that period was my know-how. How do I pass my knowledge for an exchange? And how do I leverage on people to do this? I didn't know I was a business person. I didn't, I didn't know that was business processes. I didn't know I was going to become a business. Remember I said I started f a business for survival reason. And then over time I realized that it was becoming like you're in business and then people are already calling you from one uh, school fellowship to another and then somehow some way the pentium 2 packed up and thank god i was saving i came to lagos bought 10 systems moved away from the church rented a place and at that point i realized that i was an entrepreneur um so i was 22 years old when i started the business and then because demand was coming from different people. People wanted me to do projects for them, made research, I mean, and the people were coming with different opportunities. I realized that there's more to what I'm doing in terms of teaching people. So I applied for students that were training in the computer training center. And I said to myself that I needed to look at the online version of this. And thank God my brother was always buying the uh, Success Digest magazine as I did. So I had to get all of those stuff and I started reading Success Digest, and I saw this advert, Money in the Bank Workshop. Uh, and then I read like 10 times. I read, I mean, the sales letter like 10 times about when you come, when you are going back, you are going back with money, you are going to become a millionaire. Ah. So I said, ah, I think it's time for me to become a millionaire. Let me even see how, <laughs> 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 how this works. As at that time, I was a little broke because I bought Pentium, I bought 10 systems, I've hired people, the training was running like a system. So I had to approach uh, different people. I remember I had over 200 plus on my, on my phone. I called almost everybody 
on my contact list and only three people responded one gave me part of school fees one gave me part of house rent and then one gave me part of a school allowee and then i was able to raise twenty five thousand. i couldn't raise the money the first day i couldn't raise the second day and then i, I realized that i got into that training the third day and i was in baba's class i came the first day because the first one was like everybody will talk i mean so Everybody, I mean, different people were saying different things. And I was very careful. I was interested about the person that would tell me, if you attend my class, you will go back making at least a millionaire. Which Baba will emphasize. So I said, ah, that's the class I will go to. <laughs> so I went back that day to school because I, I finished from my Abishan Abba University. So I went back to school that same Monday to go raise the money. And then I came back on Wednesday raising 25000 I remember that I was a little bit curious because I was asking all kinds of questions. And Baba said to me uh, that, calm down, young boy. I remember he said, calm down. Everything you need in this class, you will get it. So on the final day, believing that when I'm going back, I'll go back with the bags of money of the one millionaire, their promise. Uh, I was still wondering, second so day, fourth day, I, I've not seen money. He showed us the... <laughs> He showed us, I mean, his accounts in the class. We saw payments coming in. And then he kept emphasize, uh, emphasizing that if you practice this and you put this into practice, you should uh, make your first uh, money from this business. So he gave us CD. And then the materials inside that CD was private labor rights material. And I explained how the private labor rights will work, how you make money from it and all of that. I was able to publish his own, making money from it and selling it. So the last day they gave us a CD and then they prayed for us. And I sat down in the same spot thinking I'm going to pay 25,000 back, looking at the CD I was holding. And I said the best thing I could do is to get on the last bus going to school and sneak into my room. And then whatever I open the next day, we'll sort it out. Because I had promised the guys that I'll give them their money and even give them something on top of the money. <laughs> Because I thought I was coming back with money, really. <laughs> and I didn't know the money I was... <laughs> I was... I didn't know what was going to give me that money was in my hands. Because that was a CD. So, I got... I got on the last bus going to um, Ogun State. Sneaked into my room. But I could not sleep. So, in the middle of the night, I honed um, the system. Opened the notes. Was going through the notes inserted the CD, called my printer in the middle of the night, sent him the sales letter, told him to please help me publish a thousand copies of flyers. Called three of my friends, that was in the middle of the night. I said, please, you stay in bus terminal one. I will stay in bus terminal two. And I said, let me even practice what this man said. And then the next morning, luckily for me, around 12 o'clock, the flyers was ready called all my friends and then we went to different bus terminal and then we were giving the flyers out uh, and then suddenly I got calls coming in so I left the lecturer what he was teaching I left him there should be teaching it I went to the motion ground and I was telling people just come to the motion ground just come and I was selling one one thousand naira. people were collecting the CD from me and in the space of one week I sold hundred thousand naira worth of that CD and I remember I said, look for the highest platform that you have crowd and do the same thing you've done, practicing the same thing. So I called the advert um, number of success that I, I said I wanted to put a full page advert. Remember, I made 100,000 here, gave them 25,000, put something on top of it. So I had 70,000 left. I mean, I wasn't a Christian. I don't understand title or whatever. So I just transferred that 70,000, which was the remaining money with me to the advert unit of success digest and then the next monday morning it was a full page now because i was doubting how will i realize my seventy thousand naira back let me just have something back i had to put four different prizes on that advert um so i had five thousand seven five fifteen thousand twenty five thousand and then i woke up suddenly on the monday checked my phone and payment was coming in from different places people I'd had missed calls, so I didn't know why they were paying because I'd even forgotten that I sent an advert to Success Digest and I realized that the money was coming from different people. So I got a copy of the newspaper, I realized, okay, my advert. To cut a long story short, as the money was coming in, 
this was an account that was dormant because my money always come from somebody coming to school i was collecting five thousand every month as a student and then i didn't have savings because the five thousand will be over before the end of four weeks so obviously i had an account that was dormant i didn't even know the account was dormant but people were paying into it and then for me going to the bank to go reactivate i didn't understand the banking process because you know when you are poor you can't you know the, the thinking mentality of poor people is i mean so i was doubting if that money was for me but i realized the money was coming into my account but i was afraid to go to the bank to clarify if that money was for me so somehow some way i got a call from the bank i know yahoo, yahoo was very rampant around that period and then the account the manager was saying well, what are you doing come and see me now if not they will come and so i told my 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 friend that gave me the pentium one pentium two system that in case you don't see me coming back just know that i'm going to this utv bank and then they called for me so the only thing i could remember was that i carried a copy of success digest and i realized that as the money was coming in i remember what daddy said again that look for another platform where you have crowd and please another advert. So I called Complete Sports and I put another full page advert on Complete Sports. And then the money was close more than a millionaire. And then so I got to the bank and I said I wanted to see the manager and they were laughing at me. How will you see manager? Do you know what you said? I said they, they called for me. Who called? Somebody called. So they directed me to the manager and the manager said, How come money is coming into your account every one, one minute? What are you doing? Can you explain yourself? I couldn't explain myself. I only dropped the copy of the newspaper on his table. So for like five minutes, nobody said anything. He read through, read again, and then he raised up his hand and said, Can I pay into the same account? <laughs> 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 to get a copy of this product. So I asked him, I said, Why? He said, because I've been working as a bank manager, I've never seen this kind of money come into my accounts. So at that point, I had confidence that this is my money. <laughs> and as I said, I think they were, it was up to like two point something million. Now, I had like more than three or four challenges. I couldn't tell my parents that I had closed that money in my accounts. Because nobody understand this thing about IT, internet, and they've told me not to do business, so how will I explain? What will I do? And then this man is saying he wants to pay to their account. So he did a transfer, I got their last, and I said I was going to send a copy of the city. So I said to my friend, I'm going back to Lagos with the next bus going to Lagos because I was a little bit confused. I got to my parents were worried, why what are you doing at home? I said, ah, I'm a little bit sick, you know, you know how you lie and something. So in the middle of the night, I had to wake my fr our firstborn. And I said, there's something happening to me. So it was cool. I said, what happened? So I just opened the phone. And then I showed him the alert. And he screamed, ha! Where did you see this man? And everybody woke up, middle of the night. Father, mother, you know. And everybody said, come to the city. What happened? So I had to quickly tap him and say, please don't say anything. And I said, ah, I was curious. I saw 100,000 in his account. I was wondering. Where he got the money from? As at that point, that money was close to three million. But the truth is that if I told my dad that I had three million, something would have happened. Is that my dad faints? Or uh, you know, because we were in the poverty stage of our life, and there was no way you could explain to my dad, because my dad worked for over fifteen years. They gave him only um, a TV and an award. And he worked at the driver for 15 years. So he told us that whatever we are doing, we should ensure that we keep the integrity. We do what we could do in our own, not do any negative stuff. I remember that when I was in school, I was always doing night browsing every Friday. I had Yahoo guys using all kinds of charms. They were doing the stuff they wanted to teach me. But I decided that I was going to do legitimate business. It was a decision for me. And I mean, the reality is 10 years down the line. But what really saved me was for me to practice that title of daddy's book. You learn it, you do it, and you sell it. Um, the only currency I used as a then was my know-how. 
and then i realized that i needed to upgrade my skill sets uh my know-how so i went to lagos business school and i remember there was a time i read 2000 ebooks in one year i mean i was reading everything about the internet because i wanted to understand perfectly how to make money from this business and after reading over 2000 ebooks and going through the lagos business school the edc the same stuff i said to myself okay i wasn't going to do any other business I'm not going to work under anybody. I'm going to continue in this business, show people how to make money from this, and then realize as much as I, I can from this business. Um, the truth is that what I, after doing the same stuff and reading the 2000 ebooks, I said I was going to have four to five years plan for myself. So I started from 24. I mean, 24 was when I made the 3000 at uh, three million uh, over ten thousand dollars and then I, I set a goal when i was in school that okay so in the next four to five years this is what you should do you should write a story about yourself uh, one of the persons i cannot forget in my life is Otumba Kealabi. i remember that you know one of the things we uh, have enjoyed in in my journey so far is people's support I remember I, I had to write the story of my life and I called it something. Success achievement made simple out of nothing. Because I needed to look at my name and look at the way I can coin out the word success from the name. And I sent an invite to him that, okay, I want to do this book launch and all of that. You know, I had a lot of stories from different people. But he said he was going to come. I was shocked that the money I used in publishing the book and the money that even covered the expenses of the entire event was just a figure that I can be called and that covered all the raw costs. You know <laughs> and when he called the money I was I was wondering that so I had to tap and say how much did, <laughs> did he say you were going to give? And then he mentioned the money again and within twenty four hours I got the transfer. The reality was that people that were close to me that I saw as <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I, I said, okay, since I have this plan, and after publishing the book at age 30, I said, okay, I was going to plan ahead of another four years. And then it's just four years, because I'm 34 now. And then God has made this book come out, The Digital Entrepreneur. Because I said I was going to move from saying the story of my life to documenting how people can actually see opportunities, tap into opportunities, and share a practical experience of what I've experienced about this business and writing it for people to learn from. And then after publishing this book, I said to myself, I was going to move beyond this. And then when I clock 40, I'll go to 40 countries, 40 African countries, empower 1 million people. Yes, so I have to be honest. <laughs> 40, so maybe I'll remove the word Africa. And then somehow I said that, wrote it down, and then the next morning a friend called me and said, ah, don't you want to come to Ghana? So I was shocked. I said, how do you know I'm planning to go to African country? Is there somehow, some way, I just feel that you should bring what you're doing to Ghana. I'll cover the cost and everything. And then for the first time I go into Ghana, I did the event. He said, don't you want Burkina Faso? The same person. I said, oh, he said, I have contact. And then he made the contact two months after I went to Burkina Faso. And he said, ah, can't you move ahead to another country? So somehow, some way, one of the things I've enjoyed is that when you have a vision, you should know that there's always going to be provision for it. How it will come, you don't understand. What I'm doing is focusing on my vision. Uh, we did an event just last month where we launched this book at Oventa. And every time I pass through Oventa, Civic Center, Intercontinental, I go for an event there. I see the way people do stuff. And I said to myself, I'm going to stop doing events anywhere else. I'm going to start doing events in all of those places. So somehow, some way, which I just said to myself one day, I'm going to Oventa. And then I went to Oventa. One, I was asking question, how will I get this all? They, I mean, they gave me all the information. And I said to myself, I'm not going to do this event anywhere else. And I'm going to start henceforth to do events in anywhere that is expensive based on the fact that I want to change uh, the way my business is. 
interesting part of it is that I mean everybody they're still talking about the events and all of that but none of my money was involved in that event how somebody paid the event the whole I didn't understand who published the book and cover the costs I didn't all I just said was that I wanted to publish it but I said hey, how was the cost of the book and I told her I said okay okay I'll get back to you and I saw a transfer Oh, I so ah, I want to use a renter. Oh, have you checked? Yes. Okay, what's the information about? I said this is cost. Okay, I'll get back to you. Now I realized that I did this event. Ninety percent of speakers that came to speak at that event were celebrities, were IT guys. I'd not had a one-on-one -on -one contact. I just spoke to someone. I said, I would just desire to have La Cici, all those guys. And the person said, Hey, are you serious? That's Shola and Marshall. I said, Don't worry, they're my contacts. And before I said Jack, it did an introduction email, and everybody said, because it's coming from me, they're going to come to speak. I, I know I approached it, and I said, ha, sir, please, I don't know. He just said to me, don't worry, they will cover the event. Now, sitting back, I realized that the coverage of the event, I was on business day, I was on this day, you know, everything about the event, I realized that my money was not involved. It was just a vision. And because I had the desire to reach out to people, it wasn't just because of me, but I wanted to share my knowledge and impart to lives. Now, for everyone watching, the reality is that all I'm doing is just staying on my core path, which is my passion. And one of the strategies I've used to achieve so much with the little that I have done is for me to use just a very simple formula. For every passion you have, there are people that you are called to serve. Now, those people have problems. Your passion can solve the problem if you put it in a product format. So if I've done 30 books, I've done 30 books because people were demanding that I should write something around the problem that my passion can solve or can serve. So I've talked about passion, I've talked about product, I've talked about people. I talk about problem and then you look at the packaging now the reality is what formats do you think people will enjoy is it ebook is it physical book is it uh, live streaming what we're doing and or look for a way to reach out to people in a way that you know that you can put the package together and then they'll be willing to get it number next is what platform can you leverage on so social media has really helped me to even get to where physically i've not got into i mean i have clients just making payment through Paystack. All I do is put everything around my payment system and I keep pushing what I do and I see people paying. And then by the time I track where are they paying from, I see that I've not gone to, I've not even been to some countries and then people are paying for my product just because I have leverage on platform called social media. And then consistently, I realize that what I can do apart from my platform is to put a good payment system and then begin to make profit for me. I don't run an NGO. The essence why I'm in business is to serve people in exchange for money. That money is the value. The more I can serve people and give them what they need and solve their problem with the people I'm connected to, the more I can make fun money for myself. On this note, I want to say a big thank you for this privilege you have given to me, Daddy, and for everyone who has supported to make this happen for us. Thank you. Because there are so many, there are so many blood money, blood people. Oh, what did they? Oh, what did they? Oh, what did they? There are two of you that mentioned it. And it's a record. It's a record. And by the way, I just started writing a book now. And I think I'll come back and be there at my lunch. Right now, right now, right now. Leave me by, leave me by. I will launch it. I will later. And I will call you too. For <laughs> now, I want to say big thank you. Um, it was it was much much later. I didn't know about it when uh, I call him Eso as my big daddy uh, when he was telling me something um, i came out of university and my belief was that i was going to run my show as fast as i could um so 
what I did was my first two or three years, I went working for a boss that all I wanted from him was learning. And I, you know, um, I remember that I, I, I worked so hard, not because of the money, but because of you need to know that, you know, I became his favorite. I was not the young, I was not the oldest in the firm. But I became his favorite lawyer and introduced me. Incidentally, that lawyer is Emeka uh, Etiaba, the, the, the son of Virgin um, Etiaba. And I remember when I was leaving his firm, um, he took me to the high court, Ibo Shere. And my, you know, I enthusiastically followed him on that trip because we were going to buy books. And my joy was that the books were, since I was a good part of the firm, and I could always reach back to go and use the book. So we had a lot of books that we had to buy. So when I got the books and I was saying, let's tie the book to the car, and one of the books was almost falling down. He said, better not let it fall down because those books are your books. And I said, Who? He said, yes, those are your books to go and set up your own firm. And I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't factor it. But it kept me on. That you know, that was like the basic encouragement I needed when I started the firm. And I started the firm in the Kitchenet, uh, 74 Palm Avenue. And part of my encouragement was that I was going to do a lot of things with this. So I looked, so those days, because the love, the firm that I was, was at Sulere, Clerk Street, number 87, Clerk Street. And so each time I was passing through Ojelegba, I would see some used books, used magazines on the floor. And then it co what caught my attention was the ones on success, foreign success, entrepreneur, you know. So I kept reading them. And then when I go back, when I started my own practice at Palm Avenue, I would go back to those areas to go and pick, to go and look those things, having ideas about when and how and things I could do, what did I have. Um, incidentally, you know, it was, more against the run of me, or probably against the, let's put it like this, um, when those days when you had attack the days when he was using them, I, I, I could relate with that uh, because I lost my father when I, at five. And I remember um, when I was telling one my, my teacher in, in my A-levels that I would like to be a lawyer, and the first thing he asked me, is your father rich? And that day was a very emotional day for me because I was just asking, so where is my father? Why did you have to leave me? If that's my vision, it's my... And so it kept me really... So starting was I look... And I didn't... I must say it that I didn't have... Um, I'm probably the first in my family in that sense to be a graduate. So um, the benchmarks were very little. And I grew up in Oshodi. So it wasn't as if I had the the um, the cohesion of this world to know. In fact, I picked my school f by myself. It was until I got to school that I realized there was something like Greg's CMS school. The person I picked, Aladra Comprehensive High School at Tony Village, because my brother, my friend's brother, and that was the boy I was always going to borrow my dresses from. Whenever I want to go for a function, I had to go and borrow trousers and shirts from Laja. Laja's brother was attending Aladra and that was the reference point I could have of anything higher than Laja and I. So that was how I ended up there. So I didn't have all these benchmarks to look at in terms of pursuits. So when I was buying those magazines, they were like, look, they were like, they were like open up a vista for me that I couldn't otherwise there was no mentor to, to lead me to. So, and I guess that he, God sees me and knows. That's why when I say Lua Tumi Lola, I believe strongly that that name is, is that God is my sufficiency. So one particular day, for a unknown reason, I, I bought a Vanguard newspaper. Very unknown, unbeknown to me why I did that. And then I opened this Vanguard newspaper and I saw very little advert, very little talk to me, you know. But my, my eye caught that advert. I was looking at, you know, this is um, trying to do something about um, 
success and the person was saying this is what he wanted to do in Nigeria and what have you, what have you. And you know, I kept the paper there and my mind kept going back to that thing again and again. And I said, so I said, but this, I don't mind this person because I don't even have money to be buying all those foreign magazines. But so if this person is trying to do what, you know, that, then why not? Why not? So I did have to pick up my pen or probably an email. I forgot what I did. But I wrote a letter to the person to say, look, I'm, I'm, I read this magazines foreign, but I would like to be, I, I, I think I support what you're doing. And a few days later, I got uh, probably a call. I can't remember that, but I got a call from this gentleman who had turned out to become more or less a God sent father to me. You know, I I had a lot of dreams, a lot of and because the more I read those things, the more ideas came to me. Those magazines, so I wanted to have a label. I wanted to have this. I wanted to have that. So all those ideas were just you know coming left, right, and center to me. So, success digest to me, then it all started. And I caught, I went to his office, we had the chat. My belief was that the magazine was running. Unknown to me that it was just about to start. And then he told me, you know, and then even I invited to introduce a friend of mine who was living with me then to him. And then all things started. Um, Sam Adeyemi and I, Pastor Sam Adeyemi and I, were at the launch. I did the review of the magazine, and then Sam Adeyemi did the um, uh, the preaching for that day. Sorry, and then it went from there. And the massive impact of that magazine was such that every time to today, I have. If my house were born today, I probably would want to salvage my so I just because I've had them burnt up now. All those old ones. The ideas, the no sense of the ideas, the, the, how do I put it, that belief, the trust that uh, it's going to be good. I know there was a part that I had to hold him. I said, do you know you have unleashed an industry? Because I, I, it was like, what I'm seeing was beyond what was even imagined at the beginning. And so many things. So personally, the impact was that I'll come to him and I had the very listening ear. I'll come to him with a lot of ideas. I'm going to open up a label. I'm going to set up a perfume shop. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to do that one. Because I was doing those things, those are making sense to me. And he'll call me in a very quintessential way of speaking to me, to me. And you'll build platform, no? Build your platform. Build your platform. So it's like the same story, the same thing. No matter how grandiose the thing, no matter how ridiculous, how laughable the idea was, he would never condemn the idea. He would just say to me, I know build platform. You see all these things will come back later. Build your platform for us. Build your platform. So that became like the word I kept hearing every time. Build your platform. So then I'll come for, and because characteristic, I came for that program that you guys came for. Um, what is it called? Uh, uh, and uh, the internet something, bo uh, but uh, book camp. I came for it. You know, I just was dabbing into so many things. And you know, if, when I look back today, I wonder why I keep flogging myself. Why I didn't use that thing because that was a long time ago, and nothing seemed to m make sense. App. Killer app, all those things were not making sense then. But you know, over time it became like, why didn't you use this thing? So I kept going back to my law firm. But what had happened is that because of what it taught me, I was able to start using the information of law to start leveraging on that information. And today, by God's grace, that information packaging, in fact, that's, that's something I got from that, it was information product packaging. That has opened so many, so many boardroom appointments, so many, you know, teaching appointments, engagement at different level, 
business level and you know he also taught me how to write well because you know then i'll write for the magazine he will correct and correct some of the things that i wrote beautiful as may be at my own end by the time i'll see them by published you had panel and panel beating panel beating panel beating you know so the next time i was going to write i would take that as a as an as a guide to write and what have you and then you know you you go to some places introduce yourself to somebody to me vincent and they say to me vincent of social digest that was i mean for i mean even to tomorrow this is just to me vincent of social digest wow and before you know it businesses that i was not even looking for opened for me i'm not complaining now i'm not complaining <laughs> you know <laughs> you know and i'll say this about 11 years ago or so somebody came to my law firm and this was somebody that we it was lost was in school, and school and of course uh, my sister was training me then so normally you would give me what you could give me she would give me what she could give me and there was a refrain she would always give me just to scare me i've given you this money now when you get to school call all your friends together eh? do party eh? tell them your father is darusha eh? then return home <laughs> <laughs> So when I go back, I will always keep the money very well. I couldn't do what my friends were doing. But I saw them. I knew. So one of the days we had the matter together. I know he was representing that client. I was representing that client. Then he came to my office. And then he looked around, looked around, and I said, Is your father a lawyer? I said, No. Did your father leave you these things? I said, No. But you know, when he turned to leave, I just say, God, thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. Because exactly what you told me on my building platform worked so well. So very well. I'm able to touch nations now because of the platforms. People Google my name and they see or they recommend it because you have done so much. So much. You have done this one. You have done this one. And I can relate it back to Success Digest. Simple. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sir.